Before we start, Steam Frame was previously referred to as the Valve Deckard. I have no insider knowledge of what Valve are up to, and I do not have a Steam Frame lurking in my collection somewhere. This video is based purely on my experience in VR, what I have been sent, installed, and witnessed with my own eyes. I will talk extensively about Steam Frame later, and if you want to jump to that part straight away, I have included chapters in this video, but I want to discuss a few important facts first. So here we go. I am lucky enough to own one of these, a Play for Dream MR with its incredible OLED panels, inside out tracking, and more importantly, built in Toby eye tracking. It's a great standalone headset for wireless PC VR gaming using virtual desktop. Now, about a week ago, I got an email from Play for Dream, which included an intriguing little package. It contained the APK for Steam Link 2.0 beta for the PFD OS. Why is this so exciting? Well, let's get into it, shall we? Steam Link is Valve's own wireless streaming solution, which launched for the MetaQuest OS at the back end of 2023. It is basically Steam's version of virtual desktop, but it lacks some of the major features of its legendary rival. However, it's typical Valve. It's free, it's easy to use, and it just works. So what does the Steam Link 2.0 beta contain that has me so excited? Well, a bit of context first, Steam Link has a feature called Encoded Video Size PX, and no, I don't know what the PX bit means. This is Steam's version of fixed foveated rendering, and as you can see in this example, recorded on my MetaQuest 3, it works well, but is fixed to your headset movement. The exciting thing about Steam Link 2.0 it, uh, is that it has Encoded Video Size PX, but uses the Play for Dream MR's Toby eye tracking to give you dynamic foveated rendering. This means that the part of the screen that you are looking at will always be rendered in the highest possible detail. So try this, hold your finger up to your eye line, but slightly off center and don't look at it. See that it's slightly blurred. Now move your finger to the center of your eye line and look at it. See how it comes into focus. That's how dynamic foveated rendering works, basically the way the actual human eye works. Again, why is this exciting? Well, in my testing, I found that this feature works with all the games I've tested, regardless if the game supports eye tracking or not. And this is what us VR enthusiasts have been waiting for for years, because dynamic eye tracked foveated rendering should massively reduce the load on your GPU, leading to big performance gains. Users will be able to run the headsets at full native resolution because the only bit of the screen that you are looking at is rendered fully, while your periphery is rendered at a much lower resolution. Don't know why I did jazz hands there. Maybe my future is in musical theatre. <laughs> I do have Big Phil, an RTX 5090 equipped PC, but that GPU would just bulldoze my test. So I'm using my separate streaming editing PC, Big Bertha, with the less powerful RTX 4080 to run the games. First off, I will play with no dynamic foveated rendering. Then I will run the exact same scenario, or as close as I can get, with dynamic foveated rendering on 100% and do a side-by-side -side performance comparison. I have picked Half-Life Alex because I love that game, and Le Mans Ultimate, which is the most demanding game you can play in VR outside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Ready? Let's go. In your Play for Dream menu, I set these recommended values. Full 4K, 80 Hertz, True Color, Gamma 2.2, Chromatic Aberration Correction Enabled, Eye Tracking Enabled, Eye Tracking Filter Disabled. In Steam Link, Refresh Rate at 80Hz, Steam Render Resolution at 100%. Manual Target Bandwidth 350 megabits per second, Manual Encoded Video Size 512. Basically the smallest rendered area so you can see the effect as I change the slider in real time. Half-Life Alex, as you can see from the side-by-side, -side, the dynamic tracked foveated rendering is fully working. The highest rendered part of the screen is following my eyeline perfectly. There seems to be a small bump in performance, but not that much. Le Mans Ultimate, 
running on the full Ultra preset. Again, you can see that the dynamic foveated rendering is working and accurate. You can definitely see me glancing around at the other cars, checking my Motec display and looking at the corner apex. However, in this game, there does not seem to be any performance gains from dynamic foveated rendering. So, Steam Link 2.0 has eye tracking working really well. There appears to be a small performance bump in some games, but not in others. But this is a beta. The eye tracking works seamlessly. So now they need to focus on using that to improve performance. And it's Valve. So, I have every confidence they can do it. So let's move on to what I think this means for Steam Frame. Going back to the title of this video, this one feature has led me to draw some conclusions about the Steam Frame combined with Steam Link 2.0. So, here we go. Steam Frame will be a wireless, standalone headset running Steam OS, like the Steam Deck. It will have inside-out tracking for head and control positioning, so no need for expensive base stations and all the accompanying wires and setup. It will have an internal processor, something along the lines of the XR2 Plus Gen 2 chip as seen in the Play for Dream MR, so that it can play standalone and Steam PC VR titles wirelessly. Steam Frame controllers are codenamed Roy, and I have gone hands on with them. Well, actually, a mock up of them anyway. And they look identical to the Steam Deck controls, which brings me nicely to my next theory. It will have a large internal memory. Rumours suggest you will be able to play your flat screen Steam library standalone, like a Steam Deck for your face. So, fingers crossed for this feature. Steam Frame will have OLED panels like the PFD MR, glass pancake lenses and Toby eye tracking built in to maximise performance using Steam Link 2.0 with dynamic foveated rendering. Lastly, it looks like Steam Frame will have an improved version of the Valve Index off-ear audio solution, which makes me happy as it was by far the best audio I've experienced in VR so far. We are working on Valve time here, but with the release of Steam Link 2.0 into beta for selected users, Valve are testing whether dynamic foveated rendering works with Toby eye tracking. Currently, the Play for Dream MR is the only wireless high-end consumer standalone VR headset with Toby eye tracking. So it makes sense to use real-world testing for this feature. Therefore, Steam Frame will have eye tracking built in, probably from industry leaders Toby. Steam Frame is close to release. Reliable sources have stated that it has gone into production with the aim of producing 500 to 600,000 units per year. So with that limited number, my assumption is that it will be towards the higher end of the VR market, somewhere between $1,200 to $1,500, current tariffs depending. What do you think? Is my reasoning logical? Or do you think I'm being overly optimistic or even overly pessimistic? You know the drill? Get involved and comment down below. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button. The algorithm loves the likes. If you love this content, please join my channel membership like these lovely people did. You get custom badges, emojis, and early access to most of my content. If you want to watch more content from me, please click here or here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side.